So tonight we're going to learn part three of the kosher home. And tonight we're actually going to learn about something that's let's say a little bit less known or understood, which is bugs. Bugs, right? Now, most people probably don't serve grasshoppers or eat snails or worms, sure. Bugs are disgusting. It's true. Bugs are disgusting. We shouldn't eat them. But let's get into it. So first of all, Torah clearly says, Hashem tells us not to eat the milk three times, right? Which we said, no eating, no benefiting, no cooking. True. But, you know, the Torah says about not eating bugs, not eating things that slither on the ground, creeping, crawling things, things with many legs in the water that fly that fly, that go on the dry land. So if a person eats a bug or an insect, they could be transgressing four, five, or even six transgressions, prohibitions in the Torah, okay? And therefore, we have to be very careful not to eat bugs. So, like, first of all, right, no fried snails. Ew, disgusting. But the most practical application of this, though, is our bugs and our produce. Bugs in our vegetables and our fruits. This is the most practical application. Yeah, Avita does not like that type of food. I agree with her, right? But our, our produce and our vegetables and our, is the number one area where we might have bugs. And we have to be careful because there's a prohibition to eat bugs. Okay, now what type of bugs are we talking about? So I don't know if anyone here remembers, Mitch is from Muncie, but there was a time where in Muncie, there was, right, this whole thing, could you drink the water, could you not drink the water, water? do we have to have only filtered tap water, are we allowed to drink bottled, you know, or do we, must we have only bottled water, great questions. Now, the answer, though, generally is as follows, okay, we are only responsible for bugs or transgression, there's only transgression to be a bug, if the bug could be seen by the naked eye, but one caveat, a trained eye, okay? This is because I look at something and say, I don't see anything, but maybe I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm not a trained expert, right? So therefore, in water, if you look at the water, you look, you could see what bugs in the water would look like, right? And then you, you would know, okay, does these water need to be filtered or not? And your tap water is considered to be filtered. And the, the, at the end, it came out halakhically that you do not need to have a filter on tap water. But the conversation I had was, do you need to have an extra filter in the water because you need to filter out the bugs? Because of this prohibition, there would be five prohibitions to eat a bug that crawls in the water. So do we need microscopic? No, we don't need a microscope. Microscopic bugs are not included in the prohibition. Where there's no need for a magnifying glass, but there needs to be a trained expert eye to find bugs, okay? Just curiosity, who here has seen bugs in any of their produce? Okay, Mitch says yes, Gabby says yes, right? Daniela says yes. So, Aviva says yes, Chaya says yes. All right, so let me, I'll, 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 let's talk about three different types of produce, okay? There's three different types of produce, and let's un try to explore together which type of fruits or vegetables will go into these three categories, okay? So there is one category, which is called in Hebrew, musak toloyim. There's a chazaka. We can take for granted that it has worms or bugs. The most common type of bug is um, called a... Uh, Thrips, I believe it's called, the thrips, or small worms. Those are the most common types of bugs, okay? Now, these bugs, there's, there's three types of, of fruits and vegetables. There's one, to some, one type of fruits and vegetables called muxak tuloyim. Chazaka is, odds are, it has worms or, or bugs. Now, what makes it odds are? 51% or more. So if 51% of the time or more, you'll find a bug in this type of produce. It is called muxak toloyim. It's called that it has a chazaka. Odds are it has a bug. 
And therefore, we are absolutely biblically, listen to this, biblically, we are not allowed to eat that fruit or vegetable without checking it because it's established when 51% of the time that this fruit or vegetable has bugs. Okay, anyone want to venture to give examples of fruits or vegetables that more than 51% of the time you'll find bugs if you do not check? Lettuce. Romaine lettuce. The most Brussels common sprouts. Is Jewish um, challenge is lettuce is the most common. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. Yes. There's two. Uh, I don't know. Is, is asparagus actually? Is musak I'm not sure about that. Actually, good question. What, what, I missed you. I think Stephen said. Oh. No, he said strawberries. Okay. Oh, who said strawberries? Joey. Yeah. Right, okay. raspberries. Uh, raspberries and what about uh, and, 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 and and raspberries and blackberries, okay, they say are so infested. And we'll talk about well th that goes strongly into that category. Right, there. right. So that's a strong, strong category of what's called muksak metaloyim. Khazaki is it's more than 51% of the time. You are going to find bugs. And in those situations, it is a biblical obligation to check because there's a biblical prohibition. Four, five, or six biblical obligation prohibitions against eating those bugs. And if, if we assume that in these, if these fruit items, there's bugs, we're not allowed to eat them without checking them because that means we're eating bugs. Then there's a middle category. Okay? Sometimes you find bugs. How common is sometimes? Between 4 and 10% of the time. So if out of one out of every... 10 or one out of every 20, you'll find the bug. That's in the middle category. That is rabbinically mandatory that you check it before you eat it. So someone said about dates. I don't believe dates are 51% of the time have bugs. Could be dates are in the category of 4 to 10% of the time might have a little bit of a bug. Okay. But practically, it makes no difference. Halakha, we must check both. Because whether it's Dori Rice of Biblical or Durabun or Rabbinic, we must now check. So in other words, anything that the, the, the one in 20 chance or more of seeing a bug, more than 4%, you must check before you eat. You must. That's, 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 uh, that's a connect. If I, I keep a kosher home, I have to check. Okay. And then there's a third category, which is called muhsak naki. Chazaka is, because it's established that it does not have bugs. You know, it's less than 4% of the chance. And therefore, I don't have to check. And if I was eating and happens to be there was a bug I didn't realize, I it was called a shaggy. It was an accident. I am not held responsible. What are fruits and vegetables in our last category where you do not have to check? Fruits or vegetables? Carrots. Okay, carrots, fantastic. Apples. Okay, I'm happy you mm -hmm. said apples. A lot of people say, no, apples have worms. No, right. less than one in 20 apples have worms. However, if you see an apple and you see there's a hole, it's mushy, and there's a hole going inside, yeah then it's not anymore in, in just an apple. Ma. It's a suspicious apple and that you would have to check and cut, cut open. Ma. Yeah, go to mommy's upstairs. Now you, now you would be obligated to, to check that apple. Watermelon. Um, watermelon would, right. would, would be in the category yeah. or any citrus. Oranges are great for it, right? Okay, so any, so, so I saw people said any fruit or vegetable any fruit that really has a real skin, if there's no hole in the skin, you wouldn't have to check. Now, I want to clarify that. Figs, though, figs you would have to check. So I'm not sure. I mean, that's not considered a hard skin. I, I don't know if you included that. But, uh, yeah, oranges, um, citrus fruits, exactly. You don't have to check them. Now, again, if you look at it and it looks like it might be wormy, then, yes, you do have to cut it open. Okay? So the three categories of fruits and vegetables – one is 51% and above, biblically mandated to check them before you eat it. One is 4% 4, 4 or above, one in 20. So that is also rabbinically mandated to check. And then you got the Muxaknaki, you don't have to check it because unless there's some reason to be suspicious, you don't have to check it. Okay? So now, I don't think your Shanides is here with us tonight, is he? But, uh, no. But now, okay, so now I want to eat my romaine lettuce. What do I do if I want to eat my Roman lettuce? I want to eat strawberries. I want to eat 
Brussels sprouts. I don't know why you'd want to eat them, but let's say you want to eat them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I like Brussels sprouts. Let's say you right. So you want to eat them. Now, what should you do? So we have, we, it doesn't say we can't eat them. We have an obligation to check for bugs, to make sure there are no bugs. Okay. Before we go to that, I believe, yeah, Mitch is going to pull up a screen for us here. Beautiful. No, okay. Mitch, could you go to the other one for a second? Okay. Just interesting, okay? All right. Asparagus, canned or frozen, 10% of asparagus. So who mentioned asparagus? I think Mitch are infested with more six or more attached asparagus, beetle eggs. Broccoli that's frozen, average of 60 or more. Oh, my goodness, right? I mean, we're going to stop eating food if we go through this too much. But uh, essentially, right, there's a lot, a lot of bugs and a lot of this stuff. I put them on the table downstairs. Uh, what's the next? Is there a continuation of this slide? Yeah, okay. So Brussels sprouts, frozen, spinach, canned frozen. So you can see the stats here. I'll leave it up for a second so everyone could read it. So now what we have over here is a situation – Hang on, hang on one second. Okay, sorry, I'm back. So now, what, what happens if a person wants to eat this food? What should we do? So we have to check. We have to get rid of the bugs. Now, what about if it's frozen? What if it's frozen? So frozen is interesting. Do you have to eat by kosher frozen fruits or vegetables? Do you have to buy kosher fruits or uh, frozen fruits or vegetables? Well, fruits and vegetables do not have to be kosher. However, when it's frozen, now you're coming to a catch 22, you come into a bind. What's the bind of when it's frozen? Here's the key thing. If they didn't properly check it before they froze it, now once it's frozen, there's no way to check it anymore. So if you have frozen broccoli that wasn't previously checked, technically it's just frozen broccoli, but now there's no way to check it from bugs. So you can't use that frozen broccoli. With one exception, if the, the reason why you're using the frozen broccoli is not to eat a whole, but you're going to make it into a puree, you're going to pulverize it and make it into a puree, then you can buy frozen broccoli even without a kosher symbol on it. If not, it needs a kosher symbol. If you defrost it, that's fine. If, it depends, just Mitch, to answer the question. If you're going to defrost it and then puree it, it's puree. You don't have to check it. You don't have to have a kosher brand, but if not, you do need to have a kosher brand, okay? So frozen fruits that needed to be checked, but were not checked before they're frozen, so you're not allowed to buy it. That's why you need to have, it's better to buy a, a frozen fruit or vegetables that have a kosher symbol on it because if, they, cause if they're an item that needs to be checked, now it's too late to check them. But the frozen ones were checked before they froze them. Frozen kosher broccoli means they checked it for bugs before they froze it. Now, frozen mango, you can, okay, you don't, mango doesn't need to be checked. So you can buy frozen mango without a kosher certification if it's 100% just frozen mango, nothing else. Frozen blueberries, probably the same. Frozen strawberries are complicated because they needed to be checked. Okay. So how are we checking our produce? Um, the answer is... I have a produce. quick question. Please. So you're saying with it could be pureed because then it's um, like butzel basically. Exactly. Um, like, does that include like really like significant mashing or is that like really just food processor puree? Let's use the word pulverize, <laughs> which okay. is puree. Like yeah, really puree. it's not even the vegetable anymore. Correct. Exactly. You, it, it, okay. what we, the, it, it's not only because it's not a vegetable anymore. It's also because we're assuming that even where there are bugs, it's not a whole item. You see, the thing about bugs are you can't nullify a bug if it's a whole creature. Whole creatures, you can't be bottle even times 60. Bottle machine times 60 doesn't necessarily work if it is a full bug. But if it was pureed, and then we say that even if there was a bug, it's not complete anymore. So now it's just giving a little extra protein. No, it's not just saying no. So, so then that, that's why it becomes not a problem. Not because... The vegetable is not there because we say the bug isn't whole anymore. So it has baby, to be so baby, food, baby food that's been pureed or anything that's in those right. squeeze bottles, you know. Yeah, but the thing is, 
most of the time people still want you to have a kosher certification on those baby foods, not because of checking, but just because in case they put in any preservatives or anything else, right? We're talking about literally buying just a frozen broccoli, nothing else. There's absolutely nothing else to it. Broccoli would be a problem, but frozen mango doesn't necessarily need a hachshu. Frozen apples. I have one more question. Apples. Sorry, this might Please. be like specific, but questions are like good. if you're buying frozen spinach and it's OU, is it implied that it's pre-checked? Must be. Or does it have yes. to really say it? No, no, no. Must be. Good question. So it's just I want to reiterate the point because it's an important point. If you buy a frozen product that it needs to be checked, that means before they froze it, they checked it. Either they checked it where they grew it in a way with pesticides that there should be no bugs, right? Okay. Like in the, that's what there was the big goose cut teeth lettuce. They grew it that there should be no bugs. But correct, that's what it means when it says, oh, you want it. That there are, it was checked previously for bugs. Can I ask a question okay. following that? Yes. Um, what if it doesn't have like a top notch hachshar, but it's like triangle K or something? <laughs> You're asking a good question. Like we're going to get it to. We're going to bring our right. um, OU expert on sharing. But the general rule I will say is, generally, most people will be okay with a triangle gate for those things. Yeah, meaning okay. most people would be okay fine with that. I'll say that. Um, okay. So how are we checking? Now here they give a, a sophisticated way. I'm not gonna go through this way, but I'm gonna pick on here certain topics, okay? What we need to do is we need to check in each individual piece. First of all, a lot, some people say I can just check a few. Generally, we can't just check a few. We must check each individual piece. If there's a whole head of lettuce and you check the outer ones and there's no bugs, so then you don't have to check the inner leaves. That would be the exception. But generally, you have to check every fruit. You can't just check a few and assume there's no more bugs. You have to check every fruit for every piece of lettuce, okay? So how do we check lettuce? Essentially, you take lettuce, let's say, romaine lettuce. You put it in a, to a bowl. You, put, you fill it up with water. You put in some soap, dishwashing soap or vegetable cleaner. You use salt. You soak it for a little bit. Make sure that the, the lettuce basically took on another texture, the texture of of the soap or whatever else it is. I guess you're sure that it's not anymore, um, you know, if there was a bug on it, it would slide off. Now you rinse them off. After you rinse them off, now you check. If you check a few pieces after cleaning them and you don't find any bugs, fantastic. Enjoy the lettuce. But if after you still find bugs, it means you have, you have to, you're gonna have to check each individual piece. Right, so meaning in other words, if after you cleaned it, all the pieces now, you don't find any bugs. Then you don't have to check every individual piece. But before cleaning, you would have to check every, each individual piece individually. In some hashkachas, they make you rinse it and, and wash it three times. So they make them do this process three times and then they check it. It's more strict, okay? Um, now this would apply to all, really vegetables is the hardest place. Broccoli, um, bro you know, uh, asparagus, um, but lettuce, lettuce is the most common places that have to be checked. Now, if it's an iceberg lettuce or something that's a real tight cabbage, then you only have to peel away the outer layers, clean them, check. Again, if they have no bugs, you don't have to check the rest of it. If not, you would have to check the rest of it. Rabbi, what about lettuce that says it's um, triple? He just said it. He said it? He said so much Okay, never mind. We wanted to know oh. about the lettuce that says it's triple washed. Like, would you Very good. It? I'm going to answer that right. question. I'm happy you asked a very important question. So the easiest way of getting around the lettuce problem is buying pre-checked lettuce. Now, what's pre-checked lettuce? So either pre-checked lettuce is that as a hacksher. So when, if you get those romaine, I can't remember the Crown Heights brand, the brand is something Bodek. I can remember. Bodek. Or something. Thank you. Bodek. Thank you. Exactly. Bodek, which Bodek means check. They check the lettuce. That's what they do. They, they check the lettuce. They put it in the bag and they charge you an extra $3. That's, that's fantastic because they did that work for us. If a, mo a lot of people will, though, also just do a uh, triple wash. If it's real triple washed, most people accept that as, as um, doesn't need a hexture and that that triple wash is what cleans it enough. Um, I, in this house, we do use triple wash lettuce. I will say that. And is okay. that all lettuces? Like I've heard arugula is less, veg is less buggy than like romaine, but you would eat romaine 
Chuck Romaine, on Romaine is no good, good point. Yeah, it's the arugula and the and the uh, general mix. Right. Okay. Um, romaine. Most people want to either check. They'll check themselves, or they'll buy the bodic. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it comes to berries, I do want to say this: some hachshirim do not allow their caterers to use any raspberries or any blackberries. They say it's just too hard to check. So they say, okay. So some homes will you you'll go to some Jewish homes. There will be there won't be any raspberries and there won't be any blackberries. Um, that is not I'm not ruling as a halach ruling. I am not um, ruling on that as a halach ruling. However, I just want to point out, therefore, if we are using those types of fruit, they really need to be properly washed and uh, looked looked at. But really, they need to be washed very thoroughly, very very thoroughly before we eat them because of this problem of bugs. Okay. Another thing is you get like, there's like these light boards where you put the lettuce or the food on the light and it will light up and hopefully it will help you see if there are any bugs and that would be another way for you to check them. Okay, so that is the thrust or the sheer, this step for today. Um, the prohibition of bugs, it's a nuance that I think a lot of people when we're learning about cautious, we don't talk about. But happens to be, so again, it applies to fruits and vegetables that have bugs more than one in 20% of, more than 5% of the time, more than one out of 20, this will become a problem. And this has to be extra checked. Next week, we are going to learn, please God, about special things to do with bread, cheeses, meats. And the following week, please God, we're going to learn about the different hachsherim. Um, I have okay. another question. Please. Um, What's the opinion on like pre-cut vegetables on Heckshard? Um, or like if you get a triple washed pre-cut cabbage or I don't know, something like that. So is the question about, is it, is it issue, a discussion about checked or is it issue because of the problem that it was cut? I'm just trying to understand. I guess, I guess probably more, well, once it's cut, it's hard to be checked. So that's number one. But I guess it's really the cut question, like more like the knife. So, the, so maybe that's number five. Right. So let's break it down. I'll just break it down because it's a good question. So if a person buys, let's say, again, triple washed arugula lettuce, let's say, okay, I guess that wasn't necessary. Well, it was cut. So that's fine. And this is going to, uh, A, because of bugs, and B, because of cutting. And this is where the rule of cutting, the issue of cutting, which Please. we spoke about actually last week, is a blend of it has to be something sharp together with the pressure of the knife, assuming that it was a clean knife. Right. So the only real issue with a knife is if, we, if we're worried that they don't clean their knives. According to the OU, the halakhic ruling that they've given me multiple times is that any main company, let's say, or large store is going to have clean knives. You, it's a chazaka, you can rely on that. And therefore, you could buy a crudite platter of cut up carrots and celeries and tomatoes um, from Fairway, even if it doesn't have a hechsher or from any such store. Or, or similarly, you could go to any bodega, not bodega, because they, bodegas is where they said no, but you could go to uh, CVS, right, let's say, and buy mm -hmm. cut up watermelon, or cu cu you know, in those cups. If it's just plain watermelon yeah. cut up, that's fine. You're allowed to. You buy it even if there's no hechsher on it, because even if it was a even if there was a knife being used, we assume the chazak is it was a clean knife, and therefore it's not a problem. Again, this is if there's nothing mixed else mixed into it, it is straight cut up watermelon or cantaloupe right. or, or etc. Okay. Uh, okay. Mitch asked a question: What are some people slice lettuce on a meat slice on a deli? Okay, so that would be a problem first of all. And are we going to not assume that they first cleaned it off from the cheese or the meat, though? So if it, would you not say, Mitch, that if it was in a large store and they were, I'm not sure what they did with that lettuce or with, right? Uh, no, but like the lettuce you put, you know, somebody's making a sandwich and they're, you know, they're, they're slicing up the lettuce to shred I it up. I got it. That's so in that, that case, that's lettuce that they're using to make with their meat sandwiches or in their deli department. It wasn't their vegetarian or they're just, just vegetable. They wouldn't do that. Or if they would, they would clean it well before, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to... If it's a little bodega, we can't necessarily assume that they clean things well. That's what 
the halakhic ruling that was given on that. Can I ask a question? Please. Um, you said in the beginning that a person has to have a trained eye. Like, do we have that? Eye, those are we trained? So, so if a good question, thank you for clarifying. If a person um, has done it for a while, they'll they'll get used to it. Because normally, when people first start looking, they think they're going to see like a house fly or a big worm. No, it's little black dots on in a, on a lettuce. You're talking about so. Trained eye means just experience. And if you have done experience, yeah, better try to go to someone who who's, has experience. It's a matter of experience. It gives you a trained eye. You don't need to go to, you know, school for it, but you have to, I've actually done it. And eventually you have to see what it looks like a few times. And then you have a trained eye. That's what a trained eye means. Okay. And then. In other words, the bug on, on a Blackberry might, you have to know what it looks like. What am I looking for? Okay. Wait, specifically, can you just repeat what you said about blackberries and raspberries, what we do? Okay. <laughs> blackberries and raspberries, some people say you shouldn't eat them, but yeah. if you are gonna, if you do eat them, you should make sure to wash them very, very thoroughly. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. You should really rinse them very thoroughly. What's thoroughly? Thoroughly like means- Like soaking them in soap and then rinsing them, then soaking. Some, well, even if you just do a one soaping and washing, but very, you know, as long as it's very thorough. So frozen blackberries or raspberries would be more of a problem. No, they would be, yeah. They, if there's no hash on them, which then you couldn't, there's nothing for you to do with them. Can I just say it's so frustrating because like jam, raspberry jam, pureed, whatever is kosher, but right. like you can't eat fresh ones always. Well, pulverized, that goes back to the pulverized thing, right? I know, but like there could be bugs in there. But they're no, they're not more, they're not whole anymore, you know. So we don't count them as bugs. <laughs> count them as bug lists. Okay. Listen, I, I'm guilty as charged. I grew up in Portland, Oregon. There was wild blackberries growing everywhere in my school, or even near my house. You literally just go and pick blackberries, and uh, let's just say I ate many, many, many a blackberry. Forget about washing thoroughly. We didn't even wash. We just picked them and ate them. You know what I mean? And they were delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one really told delicious. us, and no one told us we can. <laughs> Fresh blackberries are amazing. Just be careful because there's a lot of thorns when you pick them. Just FYI. Prickly pieces that are attached to the bush. Okay. Um, I do want to make one more note before we not on this. I'm getting, I do get a lot of questions about if someone could eat in somebody else's house. And one of the goals of this course, and I want to say this here publicly so we all know and that um, we could also tell our people in the community is that if we, if we could, everyone knows the rules, then we can have a dialogue about, okay, what standard am I keeping so that other people could know and not, and then also nobody's insulted. If someone says, well, I just, just keep another standard. That's not an insult. It's just a way for everyone to know where we are all standing. We can have educated dialogue on that and hopefully come to more of a clarity of where we, hopefully we'll all grow, first of all, in our, in our observance, but also so that everyone can know, okay, Oh, I'm inviting you over to Shabbos. That's very thankful. And, and genuinely, people are very thankful to be invited. So everyone, please keep on doing it. It's one of the beautiful things of our community. But also, along with that, say, well, here's the, uh, you know, if someone says, well, just clarify, you don't mind me asking you about your kosher standard. Now we'll be able to educate it, when educate away, answer, well, here's our kosher standard. All right. So uh, that will help the entire community be able to uplift our kosher observance, as long with being comfortable have kosher dialogue. Kosher dialogue, very important. With that, I want to say thank you.